Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello Before I'm starting this presentation, let me introduce myself My name is Muhammad Izzuddin bin Muhammad Yusuf My metric number is 17192438 And I'm doing this presentation for subject Computational Method for Black Chemistry So thank you for Prof. Sharifuddin, Prof. Sharifuddin for giving me an opportunity to present this slide so okay. what is chemphomatics so before we want to understand more about chemphomatics we must learn what is chemphomatic actually so is a is a field of science where computers are used to solve chemistry related problems by using computational and statistical methods also can informatics focusing on storing indexing searching retrieving and applying information about chemical compounds it is a multidisciplinary field where it is involving physics biology and computer science subjects so actually uh how how we actually think about how uh, information of chemical compound are uh, being stored how a computer can obtain the properties of chemical compound such as bond order solubility toxicity just by using computers okay okay so we must know its importance of the chemphomatics first why we need chemphomatics basically so first of all it can predict the properties of a chemical structure virtually. So, this prediction helps a chemist to understand to understand more about the structure itself, especially in determining suitable drug for certain disease. So, we must know what a molecules or what structure that can work work together work well with the uh, disease in order to destroy that disease so we can determine its solubility toxicity absorption metabolism and others parameters so you can see that metabolism absorption solubility toxicity and other parameters are also related to biology things that basically is a important things or parameters for the biologies for, for biology sorry so second of all second secondly it can uh, can informatics can keep access amount of chemical data so this data can be accessed from database they are available such as parkham chem spider and ist chemistry web books web book okay so as a chemist chemistry student me myself always use parkham because parkham is so easy to use that you just google it let's say you want to google about butanol or butane okay, you, you type butane in google and there's a link for, for of a pubcam so when you click that link it gives all information just from the iupac name the structure spectra and ir ir spectra is toxicity is boiling point anything it gives us a lot of information so as I like I said it has many information that related to, to the structure such as IUPAC names spectra toxicity boiling points 3d structure and others so this database it is easy to access especially for for student for lecturers or even the public can use this database easy and it can be used for education until research purpose so like i said it is convenient for us to use this database so last but not least uh, chemistry becomes a main tool for drug design it can predict which drug that can bind to a certain target or not okay so for the event why we using chemistry in drug designs because it can reduce high cost of developing a new drug 
according to the cost of drug development and a systematic review from health policy cost of designing a new drug can estimate from 92 million until 883.6 million USD dollar so that's a really huge amount of money just to design a new drug plus it can reduce the time needed to develop a new drug so typically a uh, drug design can take up from 3 years to 20 years so it's a very long time to create a single drug but how chemical structure can be recognized by the computer okay, so in order for the computer to identify exchange and verify the information of chemical or molecular structure the structure must have chemical representation so there are two ways that a molecule can be represented line and table okay so back to the last slide like i said but how chemical structure can be recognized by the computer so it can be recognized by using cml which is i will talk last before the conclusion staging Okay, so for line representation, there are two types of representation, which is inchi and smiles. For inchi, it is known as IUPAC International Chemical Identifier. So it is a string or character that is capable to represent a chemical substance uniquely on the computer. So a single compound will always have one identifier. It's like a tagging for a compound. So, INCHI provide a precise and strong IPAC approved structure derived tag for a chemical substance or structure. So, a chemical structure can be generated by uh, INCHI that can be obtained for PubChem or any other chemistry online database. So, there is another type of INCHI representation known as INCHI key. It is a more compact than INCHI but it changes from INCHI to INCHI key is irreversible. Okay, so if so for the second is the smiles known as simplified molecular input line entry system it is a line notation that uses simple vocabulary for active and bond symbols bonds bond symbols and a few grammar rules it can enter and represent molecular structure and chemical reaction so we can generate a line notation for chemical reaction, for chemical structure, and others. So we can say that it's more compact and simpler than each notation. So SMILES um, different my notation for one compound because the proprietary of SMILES notation that led that led to different usage of generation algorithms. So this is an example for SMI notation. So for the like uh, we have ethane C2H4, the hydrogen is not included because it can detect the C that have actually it has hydrogen around it. So for the second presentation or known as table, table representation, or we can say it is a connection table. This presentation was developed by Kelvin Morris, an American computer scientist. You can see at the right side, this is his image. So, advantage of connection table, you can keep a lot of chemicals and chemical information in one place. So, people that does not have a lot of chemistry training can create and work with this kind of representation. So, let's say we want to keep this data on virtually. We can use someone that not in chemistry field. Okay. They can keep this thing all right and create a database out of it. So for the connection tables, we can determine its bond order, bond angles, atom coordinates, and other parameters. So this is the example of the connection table. So this tool. This picture is a more simplified ones, which is 
it's more easier to look at it so it so for the table connection it consists of two sections which is atom table and bond table from the bond table like i said it can be in one order so connection table are not necessarily unique it can have different table with same structure for hydrogen it cannot it can be show or not depends on the on the chemist itself so it can be used for this representation can be used for stereochemical compounds, aromatic compounds, and other type of compounds. Okay. So, but how a computer can identify these molecules, this chemical structure? So, uh, a team of chemists or scientists, which is a uh, this of Peter Murray Ross, Henry Stephen Resba, and others, they have been working over a decade to create this markup language known as uh, CML, Chemical Markup Language. Basically, it's a, an, an extension of XML, which is Extensible Markup Language. Basically, we want to help chemists to and to index or store in their that um, stru chemical structure and information about it in computers. So it help for someone to search about chemical molecule and its pro properties in web internet. We call it as internet. So CML solved the problem that HTML hypertext markup language face when. HTML cannot detect certain molecules such as bromine. Basically, when we back in the 90s or the early 20s, we can say that most of the web page they are using HTML as their markup language. So how how can HTML cannot detect bromine atom as a molecule, but instead it detects as bravo? So we must know that HTML uses a set of commands called tags where it is being used to define the, em the elements in the web page. So let's say we have bromine atom. Okay. We must include a tag or like the rules. Uh, bromine atom, we must include that bromine, another tag, molecules. So it can separate from the bravo ones which is yeah, that bravo words or any any other text that suitable for bravo for so for bromine molecule or other molecules to be recognized by the world by the web page and show shows information related to it it must have tag molecule okay so advantage of CML, it can be edited and manipulated by using CML editor such as XHJME and JCAM paint. So another advantage, it can also be converted to CML files by using a CML converter. CML converter, we can use uh, Gaussian, PDB, MDN modified, or BioVia draw. So CML is capable to hold raw data and can view the information of, of the molecules such as spectra crystal structures at high resolution due to the fine lossless. Back then, HTML can uh, identify these files and make the information that in the in the files is low resolution, such as we can see this. Example, we can see this spectra of uh, the spectrum of uh, ethanol uh, much clearer. Yeah, we just saw it much more blurred picture of it, so we can we can take so we cannot take a look of it and make the uh, decision about it about that spectra. Okay. Okay. So for the conclusion, chemistics help people, especially chemists, to archive data and information of local compounds and Last, can informatics also makes computer is a best chemist, best friend. Why is this though? Because 
it helped chemists to find this data back this data or like we can archive it we can index it we can store it we can find these properties by just using computer so we can see how powerful computer is for this for for chemistry okay so that's it for my presentation for um, about chem informatics so thank you for listening my presentation so that if there is any comments about it just let me know inshallah i will improve improve more